Yes. Okay. Welcome to Glassroots Virtual Studios. I'm Kate Dowd, and on normal days, you can find me in the studio at Glassroots in Newark, New Jersey. Glassroots is a glass art studio that works to ignite and build the cultural and economic vitality of our community, especially for youth and young adults through the transformative power of the glass arts. Since you can't visit our studios at this time, each day we're bringing activities to you via Facebook, Instagram, and our website. Please be sure to sign up for our email list to get our full week schedule ahead of time by sending your email to info at glassroots.org and follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and we also have YouTube. Today we will be talking to Morgan Peterson, Courtney Branham, and Deborah Adler, um, our theme of the week is uh, together. Uh, we're all kind of feeling like we're missing people and we just, glasses, glass blowing and working with glass is just so team oriented. And um, I just wanted to, I mean, I just wanted to share that with other people who might not know what it's like to, to make glass and make your artwork in a group. Some people do it individually and that was kind of what I was going for with the topic today. And um, maybe just to kind of start the conversation going, if you all wanted to comment or tell people who maybe don't know what it's like to make glass artwork. All right. <laughs> well, um, as glass artists and artists in general, like, you know, a lot of times people work solitary, but we as glass artists tend to work as large teams. Um, you know, my main job is working on a Dale Chihuly's team, which we have, you know, at any given point, 13 people working on the floor. At one point, we had 100 people within the whole, um, uh, the, not building, but the whole uh, team all together as a company. And now due to what's happening, it's like kind of isolating, but working as a team, it's like, kind of like working on a sports team, like everyone has to work together, be on the same page. And so during this time, it, it can be a little frustrating because always being around others and bouncing ideas off people or just general laughs that we have working together. It's difficult, but you know, fortunately for myself, I live with my partner and we share a studio together. So you know, we're a little bit luckier in the sense that we're, we're still able to see each other and still produce work, even if it's not the normal work we'd normally produce, uh, it's still something. Oh, so it's really important to have people around you who you like, um, good friends that you can communicate well with, um, and people are just kind of like on your, on your side and everyone's sort of working together and it's sort of like a high, can be a high like pressure, high stress environment because you're working with like this really hot uh, material and everything kind of has to happen immediately. Um, there's not really that many opportunities for second chances when you're working on something as a team in the glass studio. So for that, it's really important to have people around you that you communicate well, well with and that you like. And, and typically, just for, for people to understand kind of the dynamics and the different roles of the team itself, that there is like a leader or a designer or a gaffer or, a, you know, who are the other players, let's say, when you're making something, when you're making a piece of glass art uh, in the team? For us, like, because I work for Dale, he's the designer and we have uh, James Mongrain as our head gaffer along with Joey DeCamp and then the... 10 or 11 of us uh, basically assist them in whatever way we, we, we can, whether it's in the hot shop. I work in a lot of different um, areas within the company. So I'm in the hot shop, I'm in, in the mock-up studio, I do installation and de-installation with the crews. So it just kind of depends day to day what we're doing. But in the hot shop, we have our head gaffer who, you know, kind of dictates what's uh, acceptable and of, of, we have to have of the highest standard, um, you know, to sell the work, to be up to Dale's, um, like what he expects from us uh, because we are representing him. Uh, and when we work for ourselves, those roles uh, switch. So if it's making my work, I'm usually the head designer and 
the head gaffer, sometimes I kind of will uh, give that role, the gaffer role to either Deb or to Courtney so I can sit off on the side and kind of problem solve. It just kind of depends. Like the way we work, we have to trust each other uh, all the way. You know, I have to trust them with everything, with our safety, with my ideas and just how things need to be executed. Um, you know, it's one of those things that we're in this really unique uh, situation where I get to work with some of the most talented artists in the world, but they happen to be my best friends. So it's like a really tight knit family. You know, we just really have to trust each other because a lot of times like our livelihood is in each other's hands. So we just really have to trust each other. And those roles switch constantly depending on whose ideas uh, we're working with. Because yeah, and talking about the, the bonds that you create in that team, you know, other than the, the production of a beautiful glass object, the, the development of those bonds with, with each other on your team, and the, for, for what we think at Glassroots, the development of soft, kind of soft skills for our students, like communication and planning, all those skills that if you're not making glass art, are still going to help you whatever, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Um, that's the, one of the great advantages, the great pluses of, of glass blowing is, is those other, other than this beautiful artwork, you get so much more out of it. It's very like enriched and um, it's really, really amazing. And we all have to have each other's backs at all times. If we have a weak, weak link or someone that's, you know, self-serving, it doesn't work well, it doesn't bode well for the team, like nine times out of 10. Uh, and I, this can go for anything. In, whatever you're doing, like skills can be learned, but it's like how you are with other people and how you interact with people and your attitude is far more important than your skill set because that can always grow over time. Um, you know, it's not, no one's good at anything right away. So it's more important for all of us that we all can communicate and work together and problem solve whether it be with the work or if there's a dispute amongst people if they disagree with how something's supposed to be done you know it's hard you know sometimes personal lives come into play but a lot of the time it's like how well we work together and we have to really care for one another is where we are a team and we're trusting each other like you know with our safety finances like all that comes into play so it's always like people with really good attitudes um, and hard work ethic are always going to go a very long way and those that support others. So um, for some of you, like you've worked together a really long time, but at times you might be working with somebody you've never worked with before. And that, again, that developing the communication skills over time, but what are some challenges when you're working with somebody you maybe you've never worked with before? Well, um, you know, working extensively with a team, uh, you know, I work at the Museum of Glass in Tacoma, uh, and we've all worked together for a long time. And so when someone asks for, you know, like a punty, we know what that means. We know how, how to shape it, the heat that they would like. And so it, uh, it definitely makes it more efficient. So when someone new comes up on, on the team, it's easy to take that for granted. Sometimes having a new team member makes you realize, you know, how the old, how well the old team works together. Uh, and I guess, uh, yeah, you really have to develop your communication and, and your patience, you know, with uh, working with a new team member. But you also have to remember bringing a new person on the team, they bring, they have their experiences. They've seen things and experienced things that you haven't. So you have to keep an open mind and listen to what some of the new people say. And that goes for everyone on the team because you know so much of what we do is troubleshooting, uh, problem solving, uh, particularly at the Museum of Glass because we work with a different artist every week. So we're making very different things uh, all the time. And so we, you know, and, and there's always someone's in charge, someone makes the final decision, but as a team, we all come together with ideas and, you know, trying to figure out how are we gonna make this thing? And so sometimes having fresh eyes, uh, it can bring a, something new to the team that, that otherwise we wouldn't have thought of. And, um, and sort of in that regard, 
working with new people or working with a bunch of people in general that even though the jobs on the team may be different in different skill sets, uh, they're all equally as important. Um, so it's kind of, it's uh, important to, like Courtney said, listen to everyone, kind of get everyone's input a little bit. And in the end, like one person, the gaffer will make the decisions, but everyone's kind of, or should be sort of considered an equal entity of, of the project. That's something I learned from Mo and Coco. <laughs> and sometimes too, even the planning before you even get to the shop, before you even heat up a pipe, you're planning, you're, you're talking, you're having a meeting, you're drawing so that everyone is on the same page. You have to be on the same page for it to be successful. Yeah, and you need to also really rely on, you, you know, the people who you ask to come help you. I mean, this is very basic and simple, but knowing that they're going to show up, like they're physically going to show up, be on time, willing to help, but also like, uh, like emotionally or, you know, just like being there to, to support the team you want. You want to make sure that the people you bring in are going to do, do all those things. How common is it to be on different teams? You know, you kind of get your steady gig, but if you're freelance, is it is it like every day you're doing something different? It's, that's, yeah. it's gonna be different from person to person, I imagine. Uh, you know, Morgan has a full-time job now, so she's not out mixing it up with other artists near as much. You know, I'm, I'm down at the museum a lot now these days, so I don't do as much freelance within the Seattle community as much as I used to. Um, but within the Seattle Tacoma area, it is pretty common to mix up the teams and you know you work sometimes you work with the same people on a different team, but you have different roles. your roles will flip you know um, And so you know that's important to how you treat everyone on the team because next week that person that you're the boss of might be the boss of you. Yeah, I find for me, I have like a core group of a few people who I worked with like often, you know, a few times a week or a few times a month. And then I kind of pick up random little sort of jobs here and there that I wasn't expecting throughout the month. But I mean, for all of us, when we are freelancing, I know we all kind of have a core, a few things that we did sort of all the time. Yeah, and just yep. like most things, the more you, the more you're doing it consistently, your muscle memory is just get better and better at it. When I would freelance, it would jump all over the place. It would be from blowing glass. Cause, uh, I'm also a cold worker, so I would, or if I'm working on my work, it's a lot of engraving. But then I would transition to that, and then the next day be at an estate working on a bronze, like restoring, doing restorative work on major art pieces you know because I worked as an art handler basically I would do anything it took as a freelance artist to you know make make ends meet and also be able to continue to because as most of us know it is not the most affordable art form to do so you know we had to do whatever it took to basically keep the doors open um, and so working in all those backgrounds, it enabled me to kind of problem solve in different areas, but it was different uh, every day what I was doing, even working um, for Dale full time, my role is not just in the haunt shop, he has me working in the mock up studio, like, you know, figuring out how to, you know, arrange pieces together or build chandeliers, which is totally different than anything I've ever done. So it's, there is always something new that's being thrown at you. And your job is to figure it out and make it happen and just like have it be very successful. So it's just like constantly changing, right? but I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I love the constant challenge. Otherwise I think it would be boring and I would just want to not do it anymore. But I love the constant like craziness, you know? Yeah, maybe like a, a, div a diverse skill set can be helpful when freelancing, um, whether it's like within the glass blowing uh, techniques, like you're, you can work on a variety of different, um, you know, different projects or, you know, sculpting the blowing to whatever it is, but also cold working or assembling or just kind of having a variety of skills can really help uh, with the freelancing and get, getting higher for different different positions and things like that. Oh, lost you. Lost you, bud. No audio. 
with all of your um, decades of experience, um, one of the one of the things when I was talking about earlier, the soft skills of communication and the planning is is resiliency is one thing that we try and really instill in our students that if you make a mistake, that's okay. And then that bringing back into play that team dynamic, if you mess up, what happens? And do you, if you go back years ago and you make mistakes, um, that, that it was okay. And if the piece broke, you get back in there and you, and you try again. Can you, do you have any memorable moments of anything like that happening? Maybe to our students who that might happen to? Uh, I, I one time was working at Pilchuck uh, doing a pole turners, which is a they would get a team together to, to make centerpieces for the Pilchuck auction and uh, they bring in a designer and so 20 to 30 people who maybe never worked together before would work for a week and a half to produce, you know, 150 objects. Well, on the first day, you know, we have we all have to learn where everyone's skill sets are, who's capable of doing what, uh, how well people work together and uh, one of my good friends was the lead gaffer, Jay McDonnell, and the first piece we made when we went to Pony It Up, it hit the deck, fell off the stick, and everyone kind of, you know, gasped in horror, and we're waiting for the tempers to flare, and he's such a cool, steady guy that he just, he stood up, grabbed some gloves, picked up what was left of the piece off the floor, put it in the annealer, made a punny, picked it up, finished the piece, and it was the most amazing save I'd ever seen. And, you know, I learned that day of you know, not getting emotionally wrapped up in, in your mistakes or, you know, just because someone else made a mistake, you, you can't get mad at them because all that gets in the way of your critical thinking. And being able to, to think fast and creatively on the fly uh, can make, mean the difference between, you know, throwing a piece away or, or making a really wonderful piece. And no one's going to do everything perfectly every time. And it's how we, you know, we get better through our mistakes. And, you know, we, you, hopefully you learn from what you've done and just watching other people that are better than you or, you know, have, have a more advanced skill. I don't want to say really better, but people with skills who are a little bit more advanced and, you know, just watching how they work and being calm and rational and no one wants anyone's piece to fall or hit the ground, but sometimes it happens and it's okay and you just kind of dust yourself off and start over again and hopefully the next time the piece will be better hopefully the work just gets better and better every time and one of my favorite things is actually breaking the work i don't like it. oh that's really fun And even all of these ideas, even in the time we are now, all of the, that resiliency that we are developing as glass artists, aren't we applying that right now? If we can't work, you got to roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been spending a lot of time doing social media um, and things like that for a gallery that I work for in Seattle. and. Uh, that's kind of how I've been spending most of my time since um, since this sort of happened. I, I stopped working in the hot shop maybe eight months ago though as freelance, so it's a little bit different for me. Um, but so that's kind of where I've been focusing and, and in that I find social media like what you guys are doing is really important and um, and may, you know, I know Mo's been making some little production items and trying to sell that on her social media. So I find that like a, a lot of the focus has kind of turned towards towards Instagram and, and stuff like that. And yeah, I've been using my cool. time to uh, work on some of those pieces that have been maybe pushed aside and kind of ignored for a little, maybe a little too long. And, uh, you know, cause we can't really make much new glass. So I kind of have to go through the archives of unfinished work uh, and stuff that maybe it wasn't good enough then, but I can doll it up and, and figure out something to do to it to use it. And then, you know, that's part of the creative process too, is uh, working with what you got. Uh, and, you know, and with our studio, you know, our studio had kind of turned into a big pile of stuff. And then suddenly with all this free time, we were like, well, we don't have any other studios to go work in. So we had to make our studio work for us. 
And so it's, it's been a really good time to kind of reflect on what we have um, and what we need, you know, what, what we can do to make ourselves more independent and not relying so much on uh, all the other studios that we, you know, we're, we're lucky in Seattle. There's a glass studios all over the place. There's, uh, you know, there's a cold shop that we can rent, metal shop that we can rent, uh, but now we can't. So we have to kind of knock our heads together and, and figure out how, so if this happens again or continues on like this, we'll be able to you know, kind of push our way through and, and keep making stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to also add, you know, and we will get through. I, I just feel like the glass community is so strong from all of those bonds from working together, going back to that theme that, that I introduced in the beginning, that even though we can't work together now, we will be together soon. And whenever that is, we're just going to kill it. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully we'll have some video shot today while we're working at our studio. We're going to be working on some little parts, just making little uh, leaves for some big um, funhouse mirrors that Courtney and Deb have helped me work on for the past year. Um, so we're just kind of really churching that up so we can get them in the galleries and, you know, spread the love around, hopefully bring in some income to you know, spread around the community and keep each other afloat because we're all in it together. We can't do it without each other. So it's really important to throw lifelines to all of our friends and loved ones and those within our community. And for the young people that are starting out, um, it's, it's possible and you'll be fine. Just keep with it. It's, you have a really great community out there that we all want to see you succeed. So hopefully we can all learn from this and really, really like band together and become stronger because of it. Well put, well said. Um, so I, I've gone through most of my questions here. So if you, does anyone have anything else they might want to add about working together, anything that, that should be said? or you feel strongly should be said? Uh, I don't know, I just, I miss you guys over in Glass Roots. I spent a little bit of time over there before I moved out to Seattle. For me, that was a really, um, a great spot, really good people, good energy. I found the staff was really um, just, energetic and positive and I spent a little time blowing glass in the studio and also working for the administration uh, for a short time but I miss all you guys and I'm thankful to have come out here and met nice people like Morgan and Courtney and they kind of helped me out when I first got here and had no work and nowhere to live and I didn't know anything and they kept, they were really nice to me and helped me along kind of guided me through my journey over here, so I, I'm also thankful for that. So thanks, all three of you. <laughs> we miss you, DB. <laughs> we miss you, Kate. Yeah. Long, bud. Well, thank you, everyone, and um, I appreciate you being here. I do also need, would like to add um, that if you would like to continue supporting Glass Roots and um, our virtual studios that we've been putting together and you um, are able to make a donation, please go to our website, glassroots.org slash donate and um, continue to follow what we were up to on our Facebook and our Instagram. And we've been putting videos like this will be up on our YouTube as well. And um, just to stay in touch and we'll, we'll keep it going. <laughs>